to the Jada and Stitches show and welcome to December. It means it's time for the 12th and final monthly installment in our Fair Isle style 2023 calendar blanket. As I'm sure most of you have noticed by now, every third month we have created an uninterrupted repeating image that connects one side of the blanket to the other. This is classic Fair Isle style graph work at its most recognizable. Well, December being the 12th month is no exception to the rule, and we decided we would go extra special this time. What do I mean? Well, another reoccurring theme in traditional Fair Isle style work is that of landscape imagery. And that's really no surprise. Landscape and the landscape that we live in is just so profoundly effective on our entire life that it's really no wonder that landscapes figure so prominently in our collective artwork. So, for the month of December, we thought it would be oh so appropriate to create a silent night full of snowy mountains and a sky full of stars. This is the Fair Isle Mountain and Stars pattern. This, being a repeating connecting image, means that we don't have to use spools this month. We will just be alternating between our, our A and our B colors and carrying the color we're not using all the way through the row. So no spools, it's a bit of a break. But we do have to pay attention to how we turn our blanket in which color we are chaining to to turn with. Now, when we get to the sampler size or the sampler part of this project, I've got a couple more suggestions for the starry sky. Uh, a little ways, a couple ways to either punch it up or change it slightly, but I'll tell you more about that at that point. And the rest is the same. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll grab our calendar blankets, We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a fair isle set of mountains and a sky full of stars together. In order to add the mountain and stars fair isle style pattern to our blanket, we're going to want to use the same yarn and the same hook that we've been using all along. I'm using a size 4 medium weight acrylic yarn. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9. You also want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. You're going to want about 110 yards of your color A, I'm using white, and about 60 yards of your color B, I'm using blue. You also want your blanket, once you've got all that together, we can get started. As usual, I highly recommend making a sampler of today's pattern. Samplers get you comfortable with when you change color, maybe the counts, uh, changing colors at the side. There's a little bit of that in today's sampler. It also gives you an opportunity to play around with colors. Samplers can be worked over a foundation chain of 21 chains. You would start the project in the third chain from the hook, and then of course you only work one full repeat of the graph. Each row has 20 stitches in it. You have 11 rows in total. And let's take a look at today's graph. This is a fully mirror image graph. So right-handed you start on the side of the graph where the number is, left-handed you start on the opposite side to that, but because it's mirror image it doesn't really matter which side you come at this graph from, it will not change the picture on you. I am going to be using two colors, A in white, B in blue. You do not need spools for today's project, I am carrying my colors all the way across. But if you were going to change the colors of your stars, like for example you made them like white or yellow or whatever you might be doing, you might want to use your spools for that. And in order to avoid carrying a lot of color, you might want to use two spools per graph. That's entirely up to you. You of course could also continue to change or carry the color throughout as well, but it's just sort of something you might want to experiment with, especially if you've made all 12 of the blanket patterns along with us this year and you're looking to kind of up your challenge a bit. At the end of November, I put a little safety pin in my working loop just to make sure that it didn't unravel on me. And here we are, so I'm just going to take that out. And put that aside. I probably don't really need that anymore. There's my hook in my loop. We're going to chain two and turn. Row one of the graph is like row one of all the other graphs. Here's row one here. Each stitch in row one is all in color A. So you're just going to chain two, which is represented by the first block here, and then you're going to double crochet in each stitch across. At the end of this row, I will have 120 stitches because I am doing six full repeats of the 20 stitch graph. And if you're making six repeats along with me, you'll have 120 stitches. 
If you're making more or fewer repeats, it's however many repeats of the graph times 20. And that is the number of stitches you'll have in this row and every row of the blanket. At the end of row one, when you've finished with your last double crochet, remembering that the last double crochet of the row is always worked into the top of the chain two, do not chain two with A. We are going to chain two instead with B. So let's grab our B color and start a slip knot. And you can just join that B color right here in that little chain one or that little slip stitch. Just chain two. You're chaining two. You're going to turn your work now. And you've got your B color joined and you've begun the entire row with the chain two, which counts as a double crochet. Why? Well, here we are. In row two, we leap right into the B color. Row two begins with 2B, then 16 in A, 2B, repeat. 2B, 16A, 2B, repeat. So we want to begin by carrying our A color immediately. So we're going to double crochet into the very next stitch. I'm going to pick up that A and make sure I'm carrying it. I'm going to switch now. I'm going to pick up A, finish off that double crochet with the A color. So the first two stitches of my row, one, two, as you can see, the chain two and the first stitch are B. Now we do 16 in A, and because we're not using spools, we are just carrying whatever color we're not using all the way across until you get to the final color drop. So for example, when you get all the way across and you're finishing your last repeat and you are ending with 2B, the last time you use A in the whole row, you'll drop A, you'll finish the row with 2B, you'll chain two with B to continue with B in the next row. And you can see that whatever color you kind of finish with, you usually want to chain two with the same color. But we do a lot of different sort of chain twos along the edge of this particular graph. So we need to pay attention to what we're turning our blanket with. It's not a big deal, just want to pay extra attention to that. So 2B to begin, 16A, we're carrying B, I'm working over top of my short tails because why not? I'm going to get that sort of woven in. And remember when you're carrying colors, you want to get through all of those stitches that you need to do, so in this case 16A, and then maybe pause and tighten up on the yarn that you carried. I got four more double crochets to go here. So I'm going to work the first half of that last double crochet in A, but before I change colors, I'm going to lay my blanket down. I'm going to put my thumb on that last stitch of color B and I'm going to just tug gently on color B and that's so that it doesn't show through too much on either side of my blanket. Now the whole point of Fair Isle is that a little bit of that color does show through. That kind of is what creates that slightly tweedy look. So I do like that, but you don't want it to be gaping out in between your stitches. So after you crochet a whole bunch of stitches over one carried color, pause before you use that carried color Pull it taunt without pulling too tightly on that. I like to put my thumb on it or put my finger on it and hold it. Pull and then that will smooth out that carried yarn underneath your stitches. All right, we're going to switch back to B now. And we finish that graph repeat with two Bs. Now, of course, it starts again with two B, so I'm not going to be switching colors. There's 4B in between 16A, if you want to look at it that way going across. But one repeat is 2B, 16A, 2B, repeat. That's row two all the way across. I will catch up with you at the end. At the end of row two, you're finishing with your last 16 in A, two in B, Remember that you can drop A once you're done with it at the end of the row. So I dropped A, I finished my row with two in B. Let's take a look at our chart. We begin row three with B, so we can chain two with B and turn. 
So chain two with B, turn our work. And row three is 3B, 14A, 3B, repeat, 3B, 14A, 3B, repeat. So we're sort of building up the night sky around that mountain. Double crochet into the next stitch with B, and then remember you want to pick up any color that hasn't been used yet that is sitting a little bit ahead of where it's needed. So for example, I pick up my A, I work the first half of that third double crochet in B over top of it, and then I switch to A, and I'm carrying B as I work 14 double crochet in A. I work the first half of that 14th double crochet. That's a lot of, of double crocheting in A, and you see that my B is bouncing out kind of between my stitches, so I want to pause, put my thumb on that stitch there, and just pull on B, and that smooths everything out. So now I switch back to B, and it's B for three, working over top of A now to finish the graph repeat. So 3B, 14A, 3B, repeat. That's it. I will see you at the end of row three. Row three ends with three double crochet in B. Remembering you can drop your A color at the end of its last use in that row of the repeat. So drop it before you do your last three in B. Now before we turn everything around, let's look at row four. Row four does begin with B, which means we can chain two with B and turn our work. So chain two with B. We're gonna turn our work now. Row four, right-handed you're here, left-handed you're over here, but since this is mirror image, it really doesn't matter which side you come at it. 4B, 12A, 4B, repeat. Very simple. So we're just continuing to fill in that night sky around our snow-covered mountain. 4A, 12B, 4, I'm sorry, 4B, 12A, 4B, repeat. Starting with B, we've changed two, that counts as our first double crochet double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and then double crochet into the third or the fourth stitch, so chain two counts, and then two more, and then before you do your last B, get that A so that you're carrying it to where it needs to be. You can drop that B, pick up the A to finish off that double crochet stitch, so you've got your first four stitches of the graph or of your row in B, now we do 12 in A, carrying B. Before you finish off that 12th stitch with B, to make sure you kind of tighten up on your B, then you can finish off that stitch with B. So there's 4B, 12A, now we're carrying A and we're working with B. four double crochet in B, and then we will repeat all over again. 4B, 12A, 4B, repeat. So we're closing in the edge of our snow-covered mountain with our night sky. I'll let you work away at that, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row four. We finish row four with four double crochet in B, dropping A where we don't need it anymore at the end of that B color. Let's take a quick look at our graph before we chain and turn. We're starting row five now. Row five begins with one double crochet in A. So because the chain two counts as a double crochet, we want to double or we want to chain two in A before we immediately switch back to B. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to grab my A and I'm going to gently pull it to chain two. 
turn my work and now I've got that little bit of a stretch there a little bit of a reach which is no big deal we're going to be working over top of the A color again so let's get our blankets turned let's take another quick look at the graph for row 5 it is 1 in A 4 in B 10 in A 4 in B 1 in A repeat 1 A 4 B 10A, 4B, 1A, repeat. So that chain two in A counts as the first double crochet of the row. We immediately switch back to B and we start to double crochet and leave that chain two a little on the loose side. Double crochet in B for four. Working over top of that little A plus the carry. So you're working over top of your carried color plus that little bit of a reach. So you want to make sure you've reached over top of that. Then you can just take that chain two in A and just kind of pull it back a little bit and that little white bump will sit at the edge of the row. Now we will be adding a border so don't worry too much about any of the chain two or the double crochets that sit on the end of your blanket they will eventually be covered. But in order to keep this pattern going, we do want to put it there <laughs> because it might poke through. You'll see what I mean in a little while. <laughs> We're gonna finish off that fourth double crochet by switching back to A. We're gonna work A for 10, double crocheting over top of our B. Switch back to B, finish off that 10th stitch with the B, so that's 10 in A. We do B for 4, and we finish off that 4th stitch with A. So we're switching from B back to A and then double crochet once in A and then we start the whole thing all over again. 1A, 4B, 10A, 4B, 1A, repeat. So we're starting these little tiny drips of white in the dark night sky are the beginnings of stars. And you're going to repeat that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of row five. At the end of row five we end with four in B and one in A. So you're carrying your A all the way to the end to work that last double crochet in A and you're dropping B just before it. Let's quickly look at our graph so that we know what to turn with. For row six, we're starting with A. It's two in A before we change to B. So we want to chain two with A and turn. So I'm going to chain two, turn everything. And let's look at row six. Two in A, four in B. 8 in A, 4 in B, 2 in A, repeat. So that's 2A, 4B, 8A, 4B, 2A, repeat. So the chain 2 in A already counts as our first double crochet. We need to double crochet in A once more. You want to pick up your B color and just work over top of it so that you have carried it just to where you need it. And before you finish that second double crochet, you're going to switch to B and then it's four double crochet in B. And you're going to complete that fourth double crochet with A. So you're switching back to A. There we go. So we've got 2A, 4B to start, then we switch to A for 8 
double crochet in A. We're still working on that snowy mountain. Finish off that eighth double crochet with B, because we're switching back to B now, carrying A, four double crochet in B, switch back to A, and then the graph finishes with two in A. And then we start all over again. 2A, 4B, 8A, 4B, 2A, repeat. So we're still building our snowy mountain, we're filling in our sky, and we're also making some stars now. So now in the middle of our starry night sky, or I should say our, our night sky, we have some stars starting. And they've got two, and then there are two sort of at the bottom, four across, and then two again at the top. It's a nice way to even out all that white in our mountains. Anyway, that's all you need to do all the way across for row six. And I will catch up with you at the end. We end row six with four in B, two in A, and before we chain and turn, we're gonna take a look at our graph. We are heading into row seven now. Row seven begins with one A, and then we immediately switch to B for six. So that first stitch needs to be the chain two, which means we're chaining two with A. So chain two with A, then you can turn everything Chain two counts as a double crochet, so that's one A, six in B, six in A, six in B, one in A, repeat. One A, six B, six A, six B, one A, repeat. So we are immediately switching back to B to work six double crochet. And you want to make sure that if you've got any little carries, like you will have, just for picking up that B, that you're working over top of any little carried or reaching colors. We're going to work six in B. We are still filling in that night sky. I'm going to tug on my A a little bit before I complete that stitch. So one in A to start, immediately six B, and then we are doing six in A. We are still filling in our little snowy mountain. And before we finish off that sixth stitch, I'm gonna tug on B, finish it with B, Back to B for six. And before we finish that sixth stitch, I'm gonna tug on my A. Now I'm finishing that stitch with A, and it's back to A for one, and then we repeat. One A, six B, six A, six B, one A, repeat. So here's my one A, and I'm immediately switching back to B for six. That is the repeat for row seven. I'll see you at the end. That is the end of row seven. We end with six in B, one in A. You're dropping B where it finishes and then finishing the row with A. Let's take a quick look at our graph before we chain and turn. 
Row 8 begins with B. So that chain 2 that begins row 8 needs to be with color B. So we will pick up our color B and chain 2. For row 8, it's 2B, 2A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 2A, 2B, repeat. So I'll show you that again. 2B, and the first chain 2 in B counts as the first double crochet of the entire row. 2A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 2A, 2B, repeat. So we are carrying A just before we kind of need to change. So the first two stitches, now that little chaining of two at the side doesn't look like a lot of B, but remember we're putting on a border so all of our edge stitches are not something you really need to worry about, but you want to continue thinking in terms of 2B, 2A. So we switch to finish off that stitch with A, work 2A, switch back to B, B for 4, back to A, A for 4, and we're still closing in that mountain, that snowy mountain. Back to B. B for 4. Remember you're always carrying the color that you're not using. Back to A. A for 2. Back to B, and B for 2 before you repeat all over again, 2B, 2A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 2A, 2B, repeat. We're starting another little star, we're filling in our night sky, and we're continuing to build our snowy mountain top. That's all you've got to do all the way across. I'll see you at the end of row 8. We finish row 8 with 2A and 2B. You can drop A where you last need it and then switch to B. Then let's take a look at our graph. Row 9 begins with 1 in B, so that means our chain 2, our turning chain, needs to be made with B. So we're going to chain 2 and turn. Row 9 is 1B, that's our chain 2, 4A, 4B, 2A, 4B, 4A, 1B, repeat. So that again, 1B, 4A, 4B, 2A, 4B, 4A, 1B, repeat. So our chain 2 in B is the first double crochet of the row. We immediately switch to A, and we want to work the first 4 double crochet after that chain 2 in A, I'm just going to tighten up there, so that is the first 4 double crochet in A, there's our little chain 2 on the end, we switch back to B now, and it's B for 4, switching back to A, A for 2, and we're just closing in the very top of that mountain now, 
back to B, B for 4, back to A, A for 4, We're filling in that star there, and back to B for 1, and then we repeat B for 1, A for 4, B for 4, A for 2, B for 4, A for 4, B for 1, repeat. That's all you've got to do for row 9. I'll see you at the end. Row 9 finishes with 4 in A and 1 in B. And before we chain and turn, let's take a look at row 10. Row 10 is our final row of color change. It begins with B, 2 and B, which means our chain 2 has to be B. So we're going to chain 2 with B. Let's turn our work now. And back to the graph. Row 10, 2B, 2A, 12B. 2A, 2B, repeat. 2B, 2A, 12B, 2A, 2B, repeat. So that chain two counts as a double crochet. We're going to double crochet with B into the next stitch. I'm going to make sure I grab my A and just carry it before I use it. So now I'm switching to A, 2A, just finishing off those little stars in the sky. And then we switch to B, and now it's B for 12. Twelve double crochet in B, that's a lot of double crochet, so you want to make sure before you switch back to A that you tug on that A color just to make sure that it's not bunching out underneath any of your stitches. So a little bit of a little bit of tug up there. Change back to A, and now it's A for two. Change back to B, and B for two to end the graph. And then we repeat. Two B, two A, twelve B, two A. 2B, repeat. So we're finishing off those little stars in our starry night sky. We've got full large snow-capped mountains at this point. We've got just this one last row of color change to go, and then row 11, like row 1, is just straight double crochet in color A all the way across. I'll leave you to finish row 10, and I'll see you at the end. Row 10, our final row of color changing, ends with 2A and 2B. Now before we chain and turn, I know you all know it's row 11, but row 11, for the record, begins with A, is A all the way across, and ends with A. So that means we're done with B. We can chain 2 with A, turn our blankets, and you can snip your yarn now. You don't need the B any longer, so you can get that B out of the road and just focus on A. I'm going to get my B all wrapped up here, nice and neat and tidy. And you can weave in that tail later. We're going to double crochet into the next stitch and double crochet into each stitch all the way across using A. So still 120 stitches per row. No color changing, we're all done with that. This is the last row of the official blanket. 
Border still to come. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this row. At the end of row 11 of the graph, you work that final 120th double crochet into the top of the previous chain two, and that is it. Now, I am going to put my little safety pin back in place because we still have the border to do. If you're in a hurry, we have some border suggestions from previous calendar blankets that will work with this project linked in the description box down below. But if you can hang on, we do have a border tutorial coming out shortly. And hint, hint, you might want more of your color A in order to use in that blanket border pattern. I'm putting my little pin in for now, and I recommend you do the same. When the border tutorial comes out, you can decide if you wanna stick with color A or switch it up for a different color. I'll leave that up to you, but at least leave yourself the option. <laughs> so pins in, and that's it for our December repeating graph image of a mountain and a sky full of stars. And there we go, a Fair Isle style mountain and stars scene. I really love that kind of landscape. It really brings the whole blanket sort of full circle. We started in a snowy month with snowflakes and we've ended in kind of a cool snowy month with snow-capped mountains. I like the continuation of that traditional Fair Isle style graph work too. It's just one long repeating uninterrupted theme that connects one side of the blanket to the other. We hope you enjoyed working on this blanket project along with us this year, and we do have a border tutorial coming. If you're in a hurry, we've linked to some other border tutorials down below in the description box that you can also use that do work with this blanket if you want to get it done because you're uh, finishing it up for a present or something. But if you can hang on, we have a very special border tutorial coming for our 2023 Fair Isle style calendar blanket. Uh, that will be out soon. <laughs> so until then, Thank you all so much for joining us. Stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week, everybody. Bye. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.